Hello students, I'm Mr. Capwell. I'd like to welcome you to Lock 44 here on the Lehigh Coal and Navigation System. Behind me would be a 60 foot wide canal. Boats would be sailing down from uh, the coal fields up in the Pocono Mountains. Boats that weighed 120 tons would approach the lock. And as they did, they had to signal the lock tender to let them know that they were coming so he could have the gates open and they could sail right in. This is what they used to signal the lock tender. This is a conch shell. The conch shell is home to an animal that lives at the bottom of the sea, and it's the best horn to have on a canal boat because it doesn't rust and it can be heard over a quarter of a mile away. When the lock tender heard that horn, he would come out, he or his children, would come out to one of these red roof sheds called dog houses. Underneath the red roof of the dog house is a very simple set of gears, gears that were attached to the lock gates. Lock gates weighed uh, tons, but with the simple rack and pinion gearing invented on this canal, by turning the handle, anyone of average strength, even a child as young as eight, could open and close those heavy lock gates. Now if we move over here, this blue line would be the height of the water as a boat was sailing down the canal. The canal was six feet deep, so over time as the canal has been filled in, here is where the water line would be. So a boat would sail up here, floating on the water as it approached the lock. And you may have noticed that the canal gets narrower as it approaches the lock. It goes from 60 feet wide gradually down to 22 feet wide, the width of the lock. There's the water level, and now we're going to sail into the lock. Right here would be the first gate that a boat coming down from the mountains loaded with coal would have to go through. It was called a drop gate. And when the drop gate was lowered, of course the doghouse would be up on the wall of the lock, not down in the middle of the water. When the gate was open, it would drop and lie on the bottom of the canal. And the canal boat could sail right on top, over top of it. As you can see, this lock is not very wide, but neither was a canal boat. A canal boat was 10 and a half feet wide and 87 feet long. And there might already be a canal boat in this lock. Locks were designed to hold two boats. So a captain had to be very careful to have his mules pull him into the lock without damaging the boat already there or damaging their own boat by hitting the walls of the lock. Now, here's where the lock becomes magical. The water level is up there. As you sail into the lock, the level of the water doesn't change, but the depth of the lock does. When a boat got into the lock, the lock water was 12 feet deep. It had to be 12 feet deep because the boat was going to be lowered six feet to get to the next lower section of canal. The way a canal works is like a flight of stairs. You walk down the stairs, and the part that you step onto is the water where the boat floats level. When you come to a lock, it's like stepping down the riser and going to the next lower step. It's the 
lock that raises or lowers the boats. When that 87 foot long canal boat touched the gate that would be right behind me, the gate the lift gate that was lying on the bottom of the canal would be cranked back up and the boat would be trapped inside the lock. You can see how deep the lock would be. The boat would be on near the top of the lock, but it would want to get down to about this level, six feet lower than when it came in. The way that happened was with the wicket gates, the small metal gates that were built into the lock gate that would be right behind me. When those wicket gates were open, the water in the lock, 12 feet deep, would start to leave the lock through those wicket gates and the water level would drop. When it got down to six feet, the lock tender would close the wicket gates, he would crank the large gates, the miter gates that would be behind me open, and the mules would pull the boat out of the canal lock and onto a section of canal that had been dug six feet lower than the section they had just been sailing on. They had taken a step down the mountains, a step from a higher level of canal, and by raising or lowering the water, lowering the water if you were going towards Easton, the boat could sail out on that lower level and continue on its way. Thank you for joining us today here at Lot 44 in Freemansburg.